What's up, whatever, everyone? Paul from Timeless Productions here, and today we are back inside of Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, and this time we're going to be going for the Saint Achievement, which is getting at least 50 survivors out of the mall. Now, this is a long and tedious one, but as long as you follow closely to the video, you should be able to go ahead and do this on a really fast and quick playthrough. Now, the only thing about this is I suggest doing this on your second or third playthrough after you've become familiar with with the game if you haven't played Dead Rising before. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump directly in. Now for our first survivors, it's going to be on day one, the second after you leave the safe house, which is going to be Jeff and Natalie. Jeff is going to be right over here on the right side by the elevator, and Natalie will be on the opposite side to the left, right by this door over here. As soon as they join you, go ahead, take them back to the safe room. Make sure that you take all the little survivors back to the safe room as soon as you grab them. Uh, for our third survivor, we're actually going to get this one as soon as we get into Entrance Plaza with Brad after fighting Carlito. We're going to head up to the second floor into this store right over here. And behind, in the back room, behind these cardboard boxes, is going to be Bill. You're going to go ahead, speak to him a little bit. He's going to come out of the back room and he's going to look at the zombies and be like, What is happening here? I've been stuck in there for a couple of days. You're going to go ahead, talk to him again, and then he will join you and you can take him back to the safe room. Now, right after Bill, we're going to go ahead and continue. We actually have to speak with Kent. Now, Kent spawns on the first day right up here in Colombian Roastmaster, which is cut from the same cloth. You'll get this scoop from Otis. Go ahead and speak to Kent, and you actually have to complete all three of Kent's um, missions and scoops in order for you to get the survivor later on. So make sure that you're doing exactly what he says by taking the pictures of him. After, you'll get this cutscene, and he will disappear, and he'll tell you to meet him back at 12 p.m. the next day. All you have to do is take an outtake uh, photo, so make sure that you do that as soon as possible. Next, we're going to go ahead and go for our next survivor, which is going to be Bert and Aaron, which is going to be in Alfresca Plaza, all the way next to where the food court was. As soon as you enter Alfresca Plaza from the food court, we're going to go ahead and head into this um, store, this like accessory store right over here. You'll see it because it's going to be barricaded up, and he's going to start hitting you. As soon as he starts hitting you, all you have to do is hit him a couple of times, kick him a couple of times. Eventually, he will give up, and he will begin to talk to you. Go ahead, talk to Bert, and as soon as you're done talking to Bert, Bert and Aaron will both join you, and you can bring them both back to the safe house. Now, again, don't hit him too much, because if you do, he will defect on you, and you'll lose him. For our next one, we're going to go ahead and head over to the food court, where we're going to get another call about someone being in Alfresca Palazzo, which is Leah. She's going to be inside of the jewelry store, sitting inside of there, crying. We're going to go ahead and head in, she'll grab you a little bit, and we're just going to talk to her a little more about how she has lost her baby. So, once you're done talking to her, you can go ahead and take her back to the safe house. Now, she is injured, so you will have to carry her, so make sure that you're doing that, or else she will take forever to get anywhere. As soon as you get back to Leisure Park at 6pm, this cutscene will play where you'll actually see the convicts on this military type of vehicle. Once you see them, Sophie will actually be running around the park, so all we're going to do is go ahead, run directly up to Sophie. All you have to do is speak to her once she'll join you, and make sure that you hold her hand and get her out of the park as soon as possible, because the convicts can and will kill her if you don't do this. So just make sure you're as fast as possible. Next, you'll get a call from Otis around 9pm on the first day about the Space Rider machine acting really weird and not stopping. But before we go ahead and go to Adam the Clown, we're going to head over here to the Hunting Shack gun store where we will find Cletus and James. Now, you cannot save a survivor here, but this is also if you want to get the full set. Cletus is an easily missed psychopath inside of this game. The Hunting Shack is right over here in this corner behind this hallway right next to where you come in from Leisure Park in North Plaza. All you're going to do, go ahead and kill Cletus as fast as you possibly can and there you'll have your full set. Again, if you follow this guide completely, you will be able to get the full set as well as the Saints achievement for this. So just make sure that you head here as soon as possible on the first day around 12 p.m. So after that, we're going to head back to the out of control scoop, which is for Adam the Clown and Greg. So what we're going to do is head into Wonderland Plaza. We're just going take to take the stairs up this way. We're going to head over here to where the machine is. You guys can see where the scoop is right there. As soon as you get up here and interact with it, Adam the Clown will spawn, and you'll actually have to fight him. 
and of course kill him. As soon as you're done fighting and killing Adam the Clown though, he'll drop you an ID card. This ID card is what we're going to use on the machine for the uh, Space Rider. And once we go ahead and turn it off, we'll actually end up getting Greg. Now, Greg will tell us about a shortcut back to Paradise Plaza that he knows. So we're going to go ahead and have to follow him over to the Wonderland Plaza bathroom. Now, as soon as we get to this Wonderland Plaza bathroom, we'll be able to use the shortcut back from Paradise Plaza back to Wonderland and back and forth. And you'll be able to go across the map as fast as possible. As soon as you get back into Paradise Plaza, Greg will then follow you and you can take him back to the safe room. Now, at this point, around 10 p.m., you should get the call about you and Shinji, which is going to be also inside of Wonderland Plaza. So we're just going to go ahead and use the shortcut back there. They're going to be in the bookstore on the second floor called Sir Books Sir Book a Lot. As soon as you get here, all you're going to do is head up. Now, for these guys, they only speak Japanese, so you're going to have to go ahead, head over here to this corner, and pick up the book that allows you to speak Japanese. As soon as you pick up the book, you're going to want to speak to them as soon as possible, because they'll start running around the entire plaza. They'll leave the bookstore, because again, they can't speak English, and you, Frank can't talk to them. As soon as you're done talking to them with the book in your inventory, they'll join you, and you can take them back to the safe room as soon as possible possible next up around 11 p.m you'll get another call from otis about someone inside of the north plaza that just came out of the supermarket that seems a little bit injured we're gonna go ahead head back into wonderland plaza and head over to north plaza so we can go ahead and grab ourselves david now he's going to be right here in the middle of north plaza it's right after you come in from the wonderland plaza entrance and you just head to the right and you'll see him in this abandoned store that kind of has a whole bunch of food around him because again he left the supermarket and he looted as much as possible after you're done talking to him he will come now you do have to offer your shoulder to him because again he's another survivor that takes forever to move so you actually have to offer your shoulder in order for you to actually be able to get him back to the safe room without him dying of course next we're going to go ahead and around 7 a.m on day one, which is September 20th, we're going to get a call about two people inside of a shoe store in Wonderland Plaza, which is going to be Tanya and Ross. Once we head into Wonderland Plaza, they're going to be on the second floor towards where the food court entrance and exit is. And it's going to be right by the staircase right over here. If you're coming from the bathroom, you just have to head to the opposite side. It's the Run Like the Wind shoe store. Once you head in here, you'll see them in this back corner just sitting there. One is injured, of course. And the other one is panicking, freaking out because Ross is injured. We're just going to go ahead and talk to them. Now, at some point during this dialogue, they're going to actually ask for a gun. Do not give them a gun. If you do, Ross will kill himself and you will lose out on this survivor. Again, you also have to pick him up because, of course, he's injured and you actually have to carry him back to the safe room so you can get him there without dying. Around 8 a.m., we're going to get a call from Otis about a guy carrying around a machete in the Chris Lips um, hardware store. We're going to go ahead and head over to the hardware store and we're going to actually get three survivors after defeating the psychopath. But before we actually head over there, we're going to actually head into Sean's food and stuff. Now at Sean's food and stuff, we actually have to do that for the case and we'll actually see Steven there. We'll have to defeat this psychopath in order for us to get the medicine inside of the back room in the pharmacy. So make sure that you head here right before you do Cliff's uh, scoop. You're just going to go ahead, kill him as fast as possible, grab the medicine, and after you're done with that around 9 a.m., you'll get another call from Otis about a guy inside of a home and garden shop in Alfresca Plaza sitting there crying and kind of acting erratically. So make sure that you don't miss this call. First, though, we're going to go ahead, head back over to Chris Lips since we're already inside of North Plaza, which is going to be right over here in the corner, right by the entrance and exit to Leisure Park. It's going to be right there in the corner. Hard to miss this hardware store. It's got a gate that is, like, charred open. Very easy to find. Once you enter into here, you'll get this cutscene of Cliff, and you're just going to go ahead and fight and defeat Cliff as fast as you possibly can. Watch out for him, though, because he will disappear into these grates and kind of um, disappear and go into different parts of the actual area. He is a little bit of a longer boss. After we defeat him, though, we'll get the empty store key, which we're going to use to grab three more survivors right outside. Right over here to the right, as soon as you uh, exit Chris Lips, 
you're going to enter into this abandoned store right over here and you're going to go ahead and talk to rich once you talk to rich enough all three of the survivors will actually join you and you can bring them all back to the safe house now once you get over to paradise plaza at uh, around 9 a.m you're actually going to go ahead and find these two survivors which is just going to be there it's not going to be a scoop for them or anything like that so make sure that you get here around 9 to 1 p.m because they will be right over here inside of the children's store inside of paradise plaza you'll see pamela outside fighting a whole bunch of zombies inside of this like pool like water thing so make sure again that you go ahead save her and inside of the store will be heather once you've killed all of the zombies outside around pamela we're gonna head in talk to heather and once you speak to her both of them will join you and you can bring them both back to the safe house just like that next we're gonna, gonna go ahead and get a call around 11 a.m from otis about a guy inside of the restaurant looking for food now for this guy again make sure that you do have some food on you when you're going to get him or else he will not join you and come with you back to the safe house so make sure you have some snacks and apple whatever kind of food next we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and head into alfresca plaza now once we head into alfresca plaza we're gonna head into mick handy's hardware where we will find gordon now it's right over here as soon as you enter from the food court as soon as you enter in here it's to your left it's the first hardware store with all the windows and the chainsaws and all of that if you're coming from entrance uh, paradise plaza through entrance plaza you come all the way to the other end around the exit and entrance to the food court and out of the food court again it's right over here you're gonna head back here you're gonna go ahead and talk to gordon now he's going to deny any help all you have to do after he denies you some help is go ahead and kick him and once you kick him he will actually change his mind and you'll be able to take him back to the safe house and he will actually come with you now next we're gonna go ahead and head over back to the restaurant man one which is of course ronald and the guy that needs food again grab some food before you come back here but before we do that we're gonna head up here to colombian roast masters inside of paradise plaza once again in order for us to go ahead and do the second one of kent's missions again make sure you do have an, a good outtake photo i think one any one of them with a bunch of zombies with the servbot helmets on will do perfectly fine once you get here and ken actually comes he will ask you about the photo and did you take it and do you have it once you talk to kent once again you can go ahead and give him the photo now around 12 p.m you should get the call above the law from otis about joe holding some women hostage inside of wonderland plaza so make sure that you do not miss out on that now around 12 p.m which make sure that you are in paradise plaza again kent will finally spawn and he'll go ahead head up here and you can go ahead and speak to kent and you can give him the photo that you've taken you'll actually have to pick one from your photo album so just make sure you have one that's about 1,000 PP in order for you to make sure that you actually get through the scoop and he doesn't deny it. Once you're done doing the whole Kent thing though, we're going to go ahead, head back down over here towards Jill's Sandwiches. Now Jill's Sandwiches is right over here in the corner. It's going to be right by the entrance and exit to Leisure Park. So if you're coming from the safe house, all you have to do is head over to the other side if you're heading towards the park, and you'll be able to go ahead and find Ronald inside of there. We're going to go ahead, head through the barricade that he has built, head behind the counter, and we're going to head over here to Ronald. Now, once we get over here, just go ahead, talk to him a little bit, give him the food item that you have. Once you've done that, he'll go ahead and he'll eat it, and then he will tell Frank that he will join and that he will come back to the safe house with him. Once you're done doing that, go ahead and bring them back to the safe house as soon as you possibly can. Now for the above the law one, we want to do this as fast and as soon as possible because she will begin to start killing survivors. She's going to be inside of lovely fa uh, fashion house right over here on the opposite side of Wonderland Plaza, right by where you enter and exit from the food court, right up the stairs on the second floor. Once you get up here, we're going to go ahead and enter inside of it. And once you enter in, again, make sure you do this as fast as possible so that you can get all of these survivors. If not, again, she will kill them. Now, even during the fight with Joe, she will actually kill them during it. So make sure that you kill her as fast as you possibly can. As you guys can tell right here, I was a little too slow in trying to fight her initially. And she almost killed Kay, and I would have had to do it the autosave revert in order to make sure that she doesn't she also tried to kill the other survivor so again as soon and as fast as possible 
Once you kill Joe, you can go ahead and grab Kay, Janet, Lily, and Kelly from the chairs all around, and then we can go ahead and bring them back to the safe house as soon as possible. After grabbing them, we're going to go ahead and head over here to this like bunny-like plastic thingy and we're gonna go ahead and grab Nick and Sally now they're gonna be spawning around 1 p.m. they're gonna be hanging off of it it's going to be right over here right by entering and exiting to the food court if you come from the bathroom it'll be on the opposite side where like this circular thing is it's very very hard to miss once we get here we're gonna have to clear these zombies out from below and we're gonna actually have to grab a hunk of meat from the zombies once you grab a hunk of meat, we're going to go ahead, head back over, and all you're going to do is throw the hunk of meat at Nick and Sally to get them down so that they don't end up dying to the zombies. Just make sure you hit them with it, and boom, as soon as they drop down, you can go ahead, head over, and talk to them, and they will join almost completely right away. Next up, as soon as we get back to Paradise Plaza around 1 p.m. on September 20th, we'll actually get this cutscene of Sean and the Raincoat Cultists. Now, as soon as you get here, you're going to get this cutscene as, as soon as you enter in, and you will spawn in the same location every time. Go ahead, kill all of the cultists as soon as you possibly can, and we're going to go ahead and open up the box that Jennifer is inside of. Once she gets out, we're going to go ahead, speak to her, and she will join us, and then we can go ahead and take her back to the safe house. Once we get to 5 p.m. on September 20th, we'll actually get a call from Otis about a guy inside of the antique shop inside of Entrance Plaza. Now, this guy, we're going to go ahead and go grab, but we're also going to get another call from Otis about a family of snipers that are inside of Entrance Plaza pinning some guy down inside of the cosmetic store. Once you kill the Hall family, we're going to go ahead and head inside the cosmetic store that's right up by where the escalators are. So the second you go up the escalators, it'll be directly in front of you. We're going to go ahead, head in here, and we're going to speak to Wayne, and once you're done speaking to him, he will join us and we can take him back to the safe house. Next, we're going to go ahead while we're here and head over to the antique store that's on the second floor. The door is going to be closed, so it's going to be easy for you to know which one it is. And Floyd will be right here in the corner. We're going to go ahead and speak to him. This might take a little bit because he denies trying to be saved. But once he's done, he will join you and you can go ahead and take him back to the safe house as well. Next, around 5 p.m., once you get to Paradise Plaza or somewhere else, you will get a call about immunity, uh, a mutiny happening inside of the safe house now you have to grab some food for ronald because he's telling everyone that there's not enough food inside of the safe house in order for everyone to survive and he will take survivors out of the safe house if you don't get him food so make sure that you have some food head back to the safe house speak with ronald and after you're done speaking with him you're gonna go ahead and just hand him whatever food item that you have it doesn't have to be a lot of food you just need one food item it could be an apple it could be a snack it could be anything at all so once you're done speaking to him and you give him the food the immunity will mutiny will actually be averted and you will be safe for now we're gonna go ahead and bring everyone back to the safe house after you leave and you head into the warehouse you should get a call about a two women inside of entrance plaza jolie and rachel what we're gonna have to do is go ahead and head there we actually have to grab one of them before we can grab the other one so once we head inside of Entrance Plaza, we're going to come over here into this like children's store where Jolie is actually going to be sitting on the ground crying and screaming because she cannot figure out where Rachel is. Once we talk to Jolie, though, she'll do, she's going to tell you that she's waiting for Rachel, that they got separated. And all you have to do after speaking to her is actually leave. Again, Jolie will be down here on the first floor inside of the clothing store. The second one will be upstairs on the second floor inside of another clothing store that we're going to go ahead and head to right after. Once we leave, Jolie will actually join us because she wants to help find Rachel, so we're just going to go ahead and head up the escalators. Now, I would suggest holding her hand so that she doesn't get too distracted with fighting zombies and she doesn't end up dying, but we're just going to go ahead and take her up the escalator. We're going to head to the right side around here, and we're just going to continue down this way. Now, there's going to be like no zombies up here, but you can tell where uh, Rachel is by the amount of zombies that are sitting outside of that store. Once we head inside of that store, we're going to go ahead and watch them embrace. And then Rachel will actually go ahead and join us. And we can bring them both back to the safe house just like that. At midnight on September 21st, we're going to go ahead and get another call from Otis about a strange group inside of Colby's movie land that are holding a bunch of survivors. This is going to be for Sean and his psychopath fight. 
But we're, before we head over to fight Sean, we're going to go actually head and grab a couple of other survivors. First, we're going to head back to North Plaza, where we just did the Isabella, uh, Isabella case, where we saw her inside of the um, abandoned store where she got shot by Carlito, and we had to bring her back to the safe house. She's going to, or he's going to spawn right outside of that same store, right over here on the right side and the end of North Plaza. As soon as we get here, you'll see him outside just shooting off his shotgun and fighting off some zombies and cultists. We're just going to go ahead and kill the cultists if they're over here. If not, you can go ahead and speak to Kendall as soon as possible. After a little bit, he will join you and you can take him back to the safe house. Before we head back to the safe house, we're actually going to go ahead and head directly to the food court. Right inside of the food court, we're actually going to go ahead and find in inside of Chris's food, we're going to find Gil. Now he's going to be sitting here drinking a whole bunch of wine, he's going to be drunk and not wanting to come with you. But after a little bit of talking and he tells you he doesn't want to come, all you're going to have to do is head over the counter and begin to basically leave. So you're just going to jump over, head over towards the stairs, as soon as you get down the stairs he'll say wait, don't go, I'll come with you guys to the safe house. You're just going to head back, go ahead, speak with Gil once again and once you're done he'll actually join you. Now you will actually have to offer your shoulder because he is drunk and he takes forever to move at all. And you don't want him to die, especially not this far inside of the achievement. Now, around 12 a.m., we're going to go ahead again and head back to Paradise Plaza into Colby's Movie Land. Again, if you're coming out of the safe house, it's going to be right on the far end of Paradise Plaza. If you're coming in from Leisure Park or the bathroom, it's going to be right next to Jill's Sandwiches. Very hard to miss. Very, very easy to get into. So once we head in here, we're actually going to go ahead and head over to Theater 4 where Sean is there with a whole bunch of survivors. You could tell which theater it is by if you look through the window, you could see the bright lights and you could see the mannequin sitting there that he's standing in front of. Once you get in here, you're going to go ahead and get a cutscene that's going to begin of him praying and just staring at this mannequin with a sword in it. All you're going to have to do is go ahead, fight Sean, and kill him as fast as you possibly can. And we're going to go ahead and grab a, a total of five survivors here. There's going to be Beth, Michelle, Nathan, Ray, and Cheryl. After you defeat him, you will get a key to the warehouse inside of the movie land. Once you free all the other survivors, make sure that you actually come over here to this door and open this door with the warehouse key in order for you to go ahead and get Cheryl. Once you speak to her though, you are going to go ahead and get her and we can bring all five of these survivors right back to the safe house just like that. Once you come out of the safe house around 5 a.m., you'll actually get a call from Otis about a guy holding two women hostage inside of a women's clothing store in Wonderland Plaza. Now, what we're going to have to do is just go ahead and head over to Wonderland Plaza. Now, for this survivor, it's pretty easy to actually get him. But before we do that, head back to North Plaza around 1 a.m. And we're going to go ahead and head back to the gun store that we actually fought Cletus at way earlier inside of it. Once we get up here to Hunting Shack, again, if you come into North Plaza from Wonderland Plaza, you're just going to head to the far end over by the entrance and exit to Leisure Park, and it's going to be down this hallway over here, right by where Carlito's hideout usually is, or is during overtime mode. It's going to be right here inside of Hunting Shack. Now, we're going to go ahead and head there. Now, the biggest thing about this one, too, is you're going to want to clear all of the zombies outside of the store out. Just kill every single one that's here because this can mess up the survivors. You might have to revert your autosave a couple of times in order to get this because I had to do that before I was even able to get these survivors, which was absolutely a pain. Now, once you go ahead and head in, they're going to start shooting at you. And all you're going to do after they start shooting at you thinking that you're a zombie is head back out of the store. Once they um, are done shooting, Jonathan will actually come over and he'll begin to say, hey, are you a living person? Are you alive? Wait for his dialogue to finish while you're outside before you go back in. Once his dialogue finishes, you're going to go ahead, head in, and you'll be able to actually speak with him. Once you speak with him, he'll talk to the rest of the group and you actually have to go take a picture of the air duct of the security room. Now, if you don't already have a picture, you actually have to head back to the safe house to come all the way back to give them the picture. If you already had a picture on you from another playthrough, for these survivors then that makes it 10 times better and 10 times easier once you give them the picture though all three of them will join and then you can go ahead and bring them all back to the safe house now we're going to go ahead and head to the scoop long-haired punk 
which we got from Otis earlier inside of Wonderland Plaza. We're going to go ahead head to the women's clothing store, which is going to be right up here on the second floor, which is, or the uh, first floor, which is right over here at Casual Gals. We're just going to go ahead, head over here, and as soon as we enter in, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a cutscene. Once you enter into the store, again, you will get the cutscene, and as soon as the cutscene begins, you'll see the two ladies being held by Paul, who has a Molotov cocktail. All you have to do is fight him and defeat him as fast as possible. He will run around the entire plaza, so just make sure that you try to kill him as fast as possible and don't die. Now he will catch on fire by himself. You can either spit to turn uh to get away uh, get rid of the fire, or you can use the fire extinguisher inside of the closet where the other survivors are. Once you put him out though and you speak to him, he will actually join you and you can bring him back to the safe house. He's the only psychopath that you can do this with. Once you head inside the closet, you can speak to Mindy and Debbie, and they will both join you, and then you can bring all three of them back to the safe house just like that. Next, around 8 a.m., we'll actually get another call from Otis about another guy inside of Wonderland Plaza, which is Leroy. He'll be inside of the cosmetic store there, and all we have to do is head in, speak to him, and we can bring him. But before we actually go ahead and grab Leroy, there's another woman who spawns, which is without a scoop, which she's going to be on the soccer ball. All you have to do is clear out all of the zombies around her, and once you're done clearing out all of the zombies, just go ahead, jump on to the soccer ball, and you can go ahead and speak to Susan, and once you're done speaking to her, you can go ahead and take her back to the safe house as well. Once you go, once you get Susan, we're going to go ahead and head over here to Estelle's Fine Cosmetics, which is right by the where the food court entrance and exit is inside of Wonderland Plaza. If you're coming from the bathroom on North Plaza, it's going to be on the complete opposite side of the plaza right over here all we're going to do is go ahead and head directly into the cosmetic store you'll see Leroy kind of walking around all you have to do is kind of get into his pathway and begin to speak to him he has some head injury so he's speaking a little bit slower than he a uh, normal survivor would just go ahead keep speaking with him because he'll continue to try to walk once you're done he will join you and you can bring him back to the safe house next we're going to go ahead and actually head back up to Colombian Roastmasters around 12 p.m. on September 21st for our third and final Kent scoop. Again, do not miss uh, out on this. Do not be late to get to this scoop either because Kent will kill Tad if you're not here and you will lose out on this survivor, especially so late inside of the game. Once you get here, you'll actually have to see the cutscene. You'll see that he wants to kill Tad for uh, photographs. All you're going to do is fight Kent and kill him. Now at this time, I had actually gotten the phone call from Otis about another mutiny happening. And now this mutiny is very special. This is Kendall's mutiny that you actually have to avert or else he will take 10 survivors out of the safe house. And you will miss out 100% on this achievement if you do not avert this mutiny. mutiny. So make sure that you definitely do that. After finishing off Kent though, we we'll go ahead and we can grab Tad after untying him. And then we can go ahead and bring Tad back to the safe house after talking to him. And we will be almost completely done with these survivors. After you um, are done with Tad and Kent, you'll get another phone call about another woman inside of Paradise Plaza. As long as you're not inside of Paradise Plaza, you'll get the call, A Woman in Despair. This is Simone, and she is the final, final survivor. You need Isabella as well to be inside of the safe house for you to even be able to save her because you actually head over to the CD store right over here and she's actually bitten. Now once you actually get here and you begin to talk to her she's a little weary about coming back but Frank of course reassures her because Isabella knows so much about zombies that she can actually fix it. If you're coming from the safe house it's going to be right over here right across from where the clothing store is for the children and it's going to be across that little like wooden bridge on the right side if you're coming from leisure park you're just going to go ahead head to your right follow the wall and you'll see like the giant glass and you'll see her sitting there after you speak to her and she joins you you can go ahead and bring her and tad directly back to the safe house for your final two survivors inside of dead rising deluxe remaster just like that again though make sure that you actually stop this mutiny that's going to happen all you have to do is head into the safe house we're going to go ahead and find out where Kendall is and all you have to actually do is speak to him it's as simple and as easy as that just head in here and he'll be talking and rile, uh, riling up all of the um, other survivors once you're done talking to him though he will tell you that he'll wait until the chopper comes to see if it's real or not 
and once you advert it you are a hundred percent good now all you have to do after this is finish the rest of the cases get into overtime mode and finish overtime mode make sure that you have done all of the cases up to this point do not fail these cases because at the end you'll actually get isabella and frank as your final two survivors which will put you over the at least 50 survivors out of them all so once you're done with overtime mode and you fight brock all you have to do is use your disembowel on him of course like you usually would and the cutscene will play he'll fall into the group of zombies go ahead and skip that and then you'll get the credits of course you can go ahead and skip that now you will get the after like credits you know thing that you cannot skip so you have to actually sit here and watch it basically of what happened later on after they uh isabella and frank got out of the mall and out of willamette but once you're done with that as soon as you get here you'll get the saint achievement just like that and at this point if you don't have the uh, full set yet for not looking at your um actual like portraits of the npcs and all that all you have to do is start up another uh new game plus and look at the pictures and you'll get your full set um achievement just like that so with that being said thank you guys for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe for more content i hope this helped you guys out for getting the saints achievement and getting all of the survivors inside of dead rising deluxe remaster in general but with that being said goodbye remember to stay timeless be sure to like comment and subscribe for more content and especially more dead rising deluxe remaster we have a little bit more coming out still so definitely check back for that so anyways goodbye and remember to stay timeless